Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here in Manchester. It's press conference day, double press conference day, as if one wasn't enough. Scott, Scott Quigg versus John O'Carroll, Dillian White versus Alexander Povetkin. I'm joined by Mr. David Diamante. How are you, sir? Doing great, Oscar. Nice to see you. Good to be in Manchester. Um, it's a big, big weekend for the city. We've got the Derby, got the fights, and uh, Quigg Carroll at the top of the bill. It should be a lot of fun. Are you ready for this? ridiculously good schedule I mean there is a, I think there's a three month period where we've genuinely got about five six world class fights yeah it's it we're looking down the barrel of an incredible 2020 so uh, it's funny walking around the city it's just like obviously like I said the derbies this weekend this this fight card is kind of a nice centerpiece for the sporting uh, the sporting weekend but the fans are just really looking forward to it, and especially, you know, it's like all the heavyweight belts reside now here in the UK, and the fans here in, in Britain, you can just feel it. They're hungry for more, and they really want this thing to kind of get off and running, and uh, 2020 is going to be big. And like you said, we have another press conference after this one for the Quig Carroll, so uh, you'll see that in just a few. Let's talk about Quig Carroll first. I mean, on paper, it's an absolute war. We know Scott likes to go to war. We saw it with Valdez. Been a little bit inactive, Scott. John knows another one who loves to tear up. I mean... Like I said, on paper, it has every sort of the ingredients for an amazing fight. But it could also be a stinker. We never know in boxing. What are you expecting? I think it's going to be a really good fight. I mean, this is one of those fights. There, there's a few fights on here, like, that were supposed to happen. Um, you know, Carroll uh, uh, and, and Quig. Like, Qu Quig got, uh, got hurt, and so this fight got postponed. And then, of course, the Huey Fury-Pavel Sauer fight. Um, that was supposed to happen in Monaco, and Huey Fury was sick. And, and then th that fight got rescheduled. So... It's going to be interesting to see what happens with both of those fights. I, I like both of those fights, and I also really like um, the fight on this card. Um, you, you got some guys like you got Fowler, you got Jack Cullen, um, and uh, you also have um, who else is on this card that I wanted to say? Zach Parker, Rohan Murdoch. Yeah, that's a really good fight. But there, there was uh, oh Robbie Davies Jr. So those three guys. There was something I wanted to say about those guys. So Robbie Davies Jr. We saw him in that incredible fight against Lewis Ritson. He came out, you know, on the on the on not the winning end. Same with Fowler against Fitzy, same with Cullen with Cash. These guys, but they were all of those fights were absolute wars. They were absolute wars. So it's great to see these guys back in action. I think they're fan favorites. I think they all have a ton of heart and um, they're, they're ready to get back in the win column. Um, the Parker Murdoch is a great fight, number one, number two in the world. Um, then you got Dalton Smith, you got Rashad Mahdi, who's great. He's, kids, kids not even 21 yet. You know, welterweight fighter, um, the Albanian bear fighting out of Staten Island. Um, he's in the same camp as, as got like Nikita Ababi and, and those guys. So a uh, really exciting fighter. I'm excited that, that you guys are going to see him. Uh, Ibi's on the card, um, Ibrahim Nadim. Um, a lot of good fighters on this card. Should be, should be a really fun night. Let's move on to the heavyweights. Now, they're always sort of uh, the talk of the town in boxing the heavyweights. But yet we've had a week where Wilder's going to enact the clause to have his third fight with Tyson Fury. White Povetkin's been announced. Joshua Pulev's been announced. I mean... Is this probably the biggest week for announcements in heavyweight history? Uh, it's a big one. It's a big one. And, and the heavyweights are, I believe, like the hottest division in boxing right now, or at least one of them for sure. Um, of course, we all saw Fury uh, taking, taking the belts off Wilder uh, the other day in Vegas. Um, the fans here are clamoring for AJ versus Fury. But first, he's got to have the rematch with Wilder. Fury, uh, Joshua's got to get through Pulev, like you said. Now we've got Povetkin and Dillian White. So there's all kinds of great fights happening. Uh, we just saw Joseph Parker fight Shondell Winters uh, last week in Texas. That, that actually turned out to be an interesting fight. Uh, not as easy as, uh, as some people thought it would have been. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of names out there, a lot of guys moving around. It's uh, the heavyweight division right now is on fire. You said the one that the Brits are clamoring for. It finally feels like um, Tyson and Joshua say they come through there. Uh, respective fights finally they're lined up their fights next to each other and there is a chance finally is this the biggest chance that we've ever had for this fight to happen I believe so and I think it's gonna happen I mean I, I think again we never know what's gonna happen in boxing so both guys have to get past their next fights but I do believe that uh, if it goes the way that people think if if Fury gets past Wilder again and if Joshua can get past Pulev I do believe this fight will happen. I know AJ wants it, and I really do believe Fury wants it also. I think this fight will happen, and it will be huge. One of the talking points around it, and one that some of the Brits are concerned about, is that it may not actually land in Great Britain. You know, we'd want it at Wembley Stadium. I mean, you'd have to build seats on seats, because it would easily feel 90,000. Um, but there's talk of uh, big money deals from like Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. I mean, 
Would it sort of not tarnish the fight, but would it, I mean, how disappointing would it be for Brits if this fight was to land perhaps somewhere like in the Middle East when, you know, ideally we'd like it in, in London? Look, we just want the fight to happen. I mean, I think obviously the Brits would love to have it here. It makes sense because they're both British fighters. Uh, it, it makes sense, but that's above my pay grade. I just do the announcing. I just want to see the fight. I don't care if it takes place in a 7-Eleven parking lot. You know, I just want to see the fight. Let's talk about Tyson and Deontay. Um, Tyson told us what he was going to do. Many people said, why would you change plans when it seemed like you beat Deontay Wilder first time in many people's eyes? He did change plans. It worked. Um, how impressed were you with Tyson? Very impressed. Very impressed. I thought it was a great performance. And, and I said this in another interview. I, just, I think it was a round 13 type of fight. I think that in round 12 of the first fight, um, when he was knocked down, and he really had no choice but to fight, to come forward. He realized, like, I can hurt this guy. You know, he won the rest of that round. And I think that's when that game plan got devised. I think he's the one that came up with it. And I think that was why he switched, you know, trainers. I think the whole Sugar Hill thing, it was like, you know, those guys are known as more offensive trainers. And, of course, Emmanuel Stewart, you know, uh, coming up with the great jab plan for, for Lennox Lewis and all this kind of stuff. I just, I believe, I believe that these guys were the right people at the moment for Fury. And I think Fury is the one that came up with that plan. And, uh he executed it great. Um, not only that, again, I, I said this before, but he took some big shots from Wilder. Um, so I just I feel that uh, got to give him all the credit in the world. His, his chin held up. His heart was there. He had a great game plan. He said what he was going to do, and he executed it. Wilder obviously come in for some stick post fight. I mean, someone who's knocked out 41 of their 42 opponents, people saying he can't box, etc. He clearly can. He's still clearly a world-class heavyweight, but... He's coming for some stick because of some of the excuses that he's made to his 40-pound outfit, etc. Um, would you make those excuses? Well, excuses are just that. Excuses are excuses. Uh, you know, it's, the situation seems to be getting worse for him on social media. You know, everyone coming down on him and there's all these memes and, and funny things. But at the end of the day, you know, boxing is really one of those what have you done for me lately sports. And it's very tough because when you're a, a footballer or when you're playing basketball or, or American football, you know, you have games quite a bit. So I know like in the NBA, um, a player will go out, have a really bad night and he's on the front page. Just everyone's slamming him. The guy's the worst ever. And the next night he has a great performance like, oh, he's great. So it really can go up and down. It can really seesaw. And it can, the same thing can happen for boxing. It's what have you done for me lately? But the problem with boxing is that you don't have fights so often. So it takes a long time to get to redeem yourself. So you have a long time to think about what happened. And I think that's very difficult for fighters. And, and um, I think the media and the fans are, are really relentless on the fighters. Um, keeping these guys, you know, holding them to task and, and, and thinking that just because one performance isn't that great or this happened or that happened, um, they need to get on them. But they, they can't forget, like, these guys are putting their all uh, in the ring and, and into this whole thing. And it's very, very difficult what they do, not just the fights, but the training, making weight. Everything's very difficult. And so, um, you know, look, uh, Wilder went in there. He swung the bat and, and you know, he, uh, he got stopped. So we'll see what happens in the rematch. That's why there's a rematch clause. So he's got a chance to right the ship. And no one can say what can happen, what's going to happen until we see it, because we'll see uh, if he can devise a new game plan. I mean, in the, first, in the first fight, we saw what happened, and a lot of people thought that Wilder might knock Fury out or Fury was going to win on points. But no, a whole different scenario played out. So we'll see, we'll see what fight three uh, is in, you know, what has in store for us. It's 2020, the year of positivity. You said to me, let's talk about some positive stuff. Let's yeah, talk course. positively about boxing. I'm just going to say, yeah. look, I'm going to put the mic there. Let's talk some positive stuff. I mean, it's just a great, it's a great year. There's a lot of great fights. I think there's sharks in the water everywhere at all these different weight divisions. We've seen some just great fights just in Texas last week. I mean, uh, Harris and Martinez, wow, what a war. Um, unfortunately, Cal Yafai lost his titles, but an incredible fight with Chocolatito, and he seems to be back. And there's just so many great fights to be had and um, a lot to look forward to. So it's a great year to be a boxing fan. What's the weight division to look out for? I mean, obviously, we could say heavyweight, but is there sort of a weight division that perhaps you wouldn't expect that this year you think could really blow up? No, I think all of them right now. I mean, take a look from, from the lighter all the way up to the heavy, and even 140 is like on fire right now. And you got uh, Hooker Progre is going to happen, and then Josh Taylor's fighting at the SSE, and uh, hopefully uh, Ramirez is going to be back in action. So a lot of, lot of great fights. You got um, Lopez, uh, Tifimo Lopez, and, and Lomachenko going to fight. There's so many great fights out there to happen. Um, 
you know, Devin Haney's out there. Who's he going to fight next? There's all these guys, uh, all these sharks swimming around. So it's, it's great. And the heavyweights, like I said, maybe the hottest division in boxing. David, thank you very much for giving me some of your time and speaking to IFL TV. And I'm sure we'll catch up with you very soon because we always seem to bump into each other. IFL and David Diamante. It's a combination that makes sense. There you go. So thank you very much. Appreciate it and uh, enjoy the fights, guys.